the show Pacity was created in was created last year for the first and installed for the lab for the first time. I was on a on a Fulbright Fellowship in Cornell, working on issues of gender in the city, which is something I've been doing for a while now. You know, it started out initially as an idea to make a film. So I started researching for a documentary film on on how the built environment is. It wasn't specifically the city. It was built environment. So I was at that point thinking of going rural, urban, whatever. So I started doing some research. Along the way, I um, found the subject very interesting, but I couldn't find the money to actually make the film. I did get money to research it. So um, I think that was maybe mid-2000s, 2006 or something. I had a Graham Fellowship, actually, where so it allowed me to travel. It allowed me to do some research, actually spend a little time you know, getting into it. So I keep coming back to it. I do films on other things and in the middle, but somehow I find myself constantly drawn back. And over the years, I sort of started feeling that I don't want it to be a film, which is a very strange experience like we were talking yesterday. I never thought I would not want to make a film and I'd want it to be an installation. Because an installation is a very different kind of art form. I'm not very, you know, it's not been my turf. But I felt that, you know, I didn't want a gender in the city to be something that we, you and I and others and men and women and whatever could sit and watch in a dark hall where you can suspend awareness of your own body and start watching it as though it's something that happens only to someone else, right? Uh, I wanted it to be a physical, a visceral experience. I wanted us to be conscious of our bodies, of our bodies in a certain presence, of our bodies in relation to other bodies, other people in and out of the show. Uh, our bodies in relation to other images of people on the show, other testimonials of people on the show. So the show is actually working, as you know, with video, with text, with objects. And many of them are very ordinary things. Some of them are familiar, some of them may be out of context for you, but you can relate. But you are never out of the picture. You're there as a shadow crossing the projections. You're there as a real image in mirrors, just slightly distorted, fragmented. You're there in, um, in other reflections because inevitably, because I've even the first time around and this, and by design, the show requires some transparency of the walls so that the outside, the, the lines between private and public space are really blurred. So uh, you're also there in the context that's around you. So it's part of the design that you have to physically inhabit the, the questions or the subject. However sort of abstracted they are in the form of an installation, I think you know, that's been terribly important for me. Because often when we're discussing issues of, uh, of gender in relation to the city or the built environment or built spaces, we end up making a very sharp divide between private and public. But the truth is that we create little private zones when we are out in public areas. There are public zones in our private spaces of homework, whatever our private spaces are. Uh, and people are always navigating these as a gray zone, right? It's possible I might still make a film. I'm not ruling that out, but I think that there is some things that this can do, which I felt like I wanted to do. And I got the chance to work on it and to install it in, while I was in Cornell University. And there's a really beautiful gallery there in the, in the Milstein Hall. Uh, it's a Rem Koolhaas building, so much celebrated and all of this stuff. Very difficult to exhibit most things in. Again, the challenge between working with natural light and video. But, uh, but it was super fun. So that was the first, and IHS is the first installation in India. We will be taking it elsewhere, but this is the first time. And I wanted to do it then as a, an installation and a workshop. So we can take the discussions you know, from the abstract into the grounding, use it as an entry point. We need to find, always look for, for interesting ways to start discussions on gender. I don't think this is something that, uh, at the start of the workshop, about four people when they were introducing themselves, or maybe seven, said, I don't know anything about gender. And I said to them, I said, actually, everybody knows gender. It's the one thing we all know. I might not know your religion, but I know what gender is. It might be my gender, your gender, whatever, but you don't not know gender. So everyone starts out from this thing that somehow it's an exclusive women's zone about some things that they don't understand, or that they will be made to feel defensive about, right? But I think something like this for me, is, it's been a great ex, you know, sort of experiment to see how you can use an art form to actually then ground a discussion and take it backwards.
little hard to tell in the sense that some things work differently, right? You see an image, um, it was to me interesting how, you know, the, the video that's working on broadly looking at private spaces, the idealized space of the woman being the home, the temple, the whatever, you know, that kind of space and yet the limitations within it, that wall which is behind here also includes archival footage of um, uh, early 50s, uh, how to be an, a good American housewife. This is post Second World War when the women were being brought in, when the white goods revolution, when all the industry was now beginning to, that was doing armaments, was now building white goods for the home. So it's the, what's called the Eureka Forbes moment, right? When Eureka Forbes comes in, the white goods come in, the appliances come in, and the woman, women are pulled back from the factories to make space for the men. And therefore, the, the, there's a lot of publicity on, and a lot of social drive to, to say, okay, now you've served as good women by being in the war, or by being in nurses, or by being doctors, or by being relief people, or by working in factory, arms factories. Now your role as a good wife is redefined for you. Now you need to crank back and go back into the home. And there are some amazingly chilling, almost, videos of how to be a good American housewife, OK? So it's, it's interesting, even in a campus like that, there's very little recognition of the fact they're like, what is this happening? Because somehow it's nice to see gender somewhere else. Especially you have to remember that the, the show came on post the December 16th violence in Delhi, which was making global news all over the place, right? There was vigils in, in Cornell, which was actually really good because that vigil we managed to get in, you know, students of color from everywhere, from all continents pretty much. So it was super good. It was a very good opportunity to do that. But the, you know, there's a very, there was a, there's a flattening of the fact that gender violence, et cetera, is somehow the purview of nations like this. Uh, so, there, you know, I could see the, the disturbance when they saw a video like that, if, you know, once they got to place it. There's also a sort of simpler reading of Hindi cinema images. It's like, oh, cool, that's Bollywood. And you're like, no, I mean, yeah, but, you know, we're looking at it somewhat different. So, so there, there's these nuances, you know, which here you're not that glamour struck by, it's not so exotic. Bollywood is not that exotic. It is, I mean, it's got a mainstream power, but it's not the same thing. So, uh, and a lot of curiosity about, you know, where the documentary footage from, which, which was interesting, you know, and how it was shot. And uh, I think this, the, you know, because I'm a filmmaker, they were sort of prepared for the videos. But the other levels of it, not everybody knows that I've been working on it for a long time. Not everybody knows that, you know, that it has accept, excerpts of interviews. There was nothing. The show, did, show card didn't say anything, right? It just said that there's a show. So it was an interesting set of discussions, you know, in terms of... Uh, of what it triggered off. And actually, people wrote a lot more than they did here, you know, in the feedback cards, um, which was actually great, which was really good, including we were witness to some domestic squabble across cards. It was super fun. <laughs> See, I agree with you that it's a, it's a sort of strange and slightly uh, abstracted form. Uh, it's also a form that sort of works in the interstices between each ind individual unit. Even when you're creating it, it's like you're creating fragments. You're not quite sure. I mean, I was not quite sure. I mean, maybe somebody else who's more arrived at doing installation might articulate it this differently, but I don't have any diffidence about saying that this was my first piece, and I was, my instinct was saying that these things would work. Uh, in practice, I still had to wait for the chemistry to show, reveal itself. You know, uh, yes, at one level, I actually thought there was a one feedback yesterday from the class, which I thought was really interesting. Uh, this woman who's been in the US has seen a lot of shows, you know, where they distill, distill, distill to the point of you're standing and reading a lot, of in lot into it. And she said to me, when I was seeing it, I'm not, I wasn't sure I liked it. I felt it wasn't as intellectualized as I'm used to. But I stepped away and suddenly I could see what you were trying to say. And it came to me, and I'm actually really happy I did. I'm like, wow. And I really appreciate her saying that. That sometimes, you know, things in, in fragments don't make sense. I actually don't expect it to make sense while you're engaging with each individual piece. Right? Because they're not obviously layered. No, it's not like a photo with a soundtrack. That there's a simple, it's really like a film, in a way. A static film, in a way, playing. Something is moving and something is whatever. But 
So there is a concern, but I think it's like anything. It's like you're used to doing, your, we have grown up as a nation watching a certain kind of documentary, right? But that doesn't mean as documentary filmmakers, we have to keep reproducing that template. You push the form. You push yourself, you push a viewer, right? To start working at various levels. Because suppose I was talking to you about something as I am now, I might give you a tangential example and I will come back and then I might quote something and I might say, remember that scene from a film and I might come back to talk. And I don't see why films can't be like that. Yes, there is a linearity, but there is no way that linearity doesn't allow you some bypasses and coming, returning. Whether it works or not is always going to be tangential. It's going to be, if you write a novel, it's going to be right if you write a, write a, a straight linear narrative. Someone says, F, F it, yeah, I've seen this a million times, you know? So what does it do to you? I mean, like for me now, a certain, a certain language of voiceover, it just kills me. Cannot, I'm not saying I have a problem with any voices uh, as a voiceover, but a certain kind of, of voiceover, it just makes my skin crawl, you know? Because it comes with certain assumption of who has the knowledge and who, who doesn't, etc., etc. So I think form is always going to be a bit like that. It's always going to be tricky if you're, if you're pushing to an unfamiliar turf. Uh, one of my films, or somebody in an audience said to me, you're not making this really easy. And I don't think I make that complicated films, but he was like, I don't, you're not making this really easy for an audience. I mean, people like us can understand, but what about others? So I said, you took the trouble, no? Maybe somebody else will. And maybe I'm actually in this issue pushing you to, to engage a little bit more because I don't want it to be easy. Because it's also matters of issues and what you're trying to say, right? So I think in this, I wanted it to be about us and someone else, about me and someone else. It didn't want it to only be about somebody else. So, um, and I didn't want us to forget where we are. So for instance, you know, one of the things we've introduced in this show, which was not in the original, which is the live videos from the environment around us. You know, again fractured, again disproportionate. I if you were to walk around the show, you will see cars rolling almost at ceiling height but it's the scene from outside. It's a way of actually locating ourselves literally within Bangalore now in particular. And of course it will work in, in, in parts. I'm not actually doing a live immersive video on the, on the crossing. I'm creating a certain kind of immersive, immersiveness within a slightly segregated space. So it's going to be, so we have both of a live feed of the, of the institution we're in and the location we're in. And I think that's a, that's a really exciting addition. It's something I've been wanting to make it more uh, geography specific, you know, to not flatten the thing that it's all everywhere, it's exactly the same. Can't be changing videos and doing, unless I'm working on it as a project everywhere. You know, which I, I, but the videos are sort of abstract enough, I feel to belong in a lot of places. It's something I work towards. And in that sense, it was nice to work out of my own context, to be doing this in the US. You know, just to be doing it out of my own context. Yeah, I could have been doing it anywhere. But so I was forced to, uh, to look at images in a much harsher kind of way about what would this bungalow mean to somebody in this context or that, right? Uh, what, would, what would this image mean there? You know, kind of thing. So, uh, so I'm happy with the sort of local component. I, and I hope in that sense, it's fun, no? Film you sort of seal when you're done. And it's great because it's much easier. But you also sometimes feel like, oh my God, I wish, I, I, you know, when you go back to a film, sometimes six months later, sometimes six years later, and you're screening it and you're like, oh, oh, I think I've moved on. But the film is stuck in its time, in moment. And that's fine. You know, it has a beauty because it's of a moment. And you are always, if you're there, then you can take the discussion further. But I like the fact that this is also a growing sort of, I, I feel like this is an organic thing. Because even when you move it from one space to the next, it doesn't behave the same way. It's like moving home. It takes a while for it, for the same furniture and the same whatever to find a new equation. And I love moving home. Actually, you know, hate the idea of being locked in one place, you know? And so for me, this one, and it wasn't easy. I mean, you know that once we thought it was absolutely final, we still move a wall around from here to there. But I think, I think that that's nice. I mean, it's got another life and pushes you constantly. It's not like, oh, yeah, you just have to see if your projector is working right and your aspect ratio is okay and you're ready to roll. You take a little other kind of trouble and it's a new experience for me, you know, to do that. Um, so yeah, 